sure that this white is definitely a dirty white and not a pure white. Because that's what's going to push those teeth back into the mouth. And it's going to set them back behind the mustache. That's important when you're painting a mustache. Okay, I'm going to use our little zero sable. Let me wash my brush. zero sable we we'll use some white and we'll create highlight on the teeth these teeth in the front do have highlight they're lighter toward the front of the mouth now this person doesn't have very much gum showing it's mostly teeth If you get done with your person and you painted the teeth in and you got your highlight on and everything and the next day you come to look at your painting again and you look at it and the teeth aren't quite bright enough, sometimes that underneath color soaks up some of the highlight so you might have to re-put some more shine on there and that's fine. You can always go back into anything. It's one thing about oil painting, you're never stuck with anything. You can change anything right up to the end. And then the mustache or the hair, the facial hair, you want to apply that just like you'd apply any other hair. Now this particular person's mustache is brown, so we're going to use burnt umber. And you're going to create that mustache by using a hair-like stroke. You're always thinking hair. So go like this. You notice I put the skin right down into the mustache because I don't want any edge showing, any white canvas showing through there. And you stroke the mustache the direction that it falls. So that's this way. Now mustaches do fall, they're, they're kind of thick and they fall around as a rule. So what you want to do is you want to start here, you want to curve in like this with your hairs. Then as you get toward the center, they're a little straighter and then you curve this way as you get over here to the side. Now we want to put a little highlight on that mustache, and I'm going to use some cat orange. Also another good highlight for uh, uh, dark hair is the flesh tone, but I'm, for this, our purpose is here, I'm going to use some cat orange. And the bottom side of the mustache won't get the highlight because the light hits from the top, it hits the top of the mustache, but remember the mustache is rounding under. So as it rounds under, it gets shadowed under there. So the top of the mustache is where you get the, the highlight. This side over here is a little shadier than this side, so I'm going to put a little more highlight on this, on my left here. Okay, remember the corners of the mouth, inside the mouth, are very dark. We've got to take our burn umber with a little bit of purple added to it. We want to really darken this corner of the mouth to set it in. I'm going to soften. See that light, that highlight coming along there? I'm going to dull that down just a little bit. If that's too bright, it'll look like light is shining in there. And the, the mustache being there shouldn't be allowing the, the highlight to shine in there. Okay? The nostrils, same thing. Burn ember. Nice and dark. Remember, they lay pretty flat on the nose. Not looking up his nose, you're looking at the nose. of our fleshy tongue. Put a little bit more right in here. Remembering the bulb, kind of work with the direction of that bulb. Remembering the bulb, kind of work with the direction of that bulb. Okay, let's do this. I wanted to show you the profile mouth. But again, when you're doing your color on your canvas, you have to do the general shading. A general coating of flesh over all the skin lightly 
tint the canvas. Scrub that paint on there. Don't cover your umbers. Tint them. There's a shadow right here. The light is hitting the top of the nose, and so the nose itself creates a shadow on the face. And there's a shadow under the lip here. Now you notice there's no line here making a, a specific lip what's going to form the lip is just the shadows that we put under it and the highlights we put on it. Okay. Let's go ahead and put some highlight on our skin. This part of the bulb of the nose, and this happens even in the, in the ones that face forward, but you don't see them as well, this part of the bulb of the nose gets a highlight usually at the top of the bulb, especially if your light source is from above, okay? You get a highlight right here on the front of the nose. Okay, let's work on painting the eyes. I want to talk to you about some basic concepts and then show you each individual eye color and how to apply that. We want to remember that the white of the eye always needs to be dirty. And the reason for that is that the eyelid will cast a shadow on the white of the eye, especially if it has lashes. So you want to use a little bit of Payne's Gray, Burn Umber, and then white, about equal amounts of you put the paint gray and the burn number together and then take a little piece of that and add an equal amount of white to it. So you get a nice gray tone. This is the white of the eye here, nice and dirty. If you get this too bright, it'll make the eye look like it's buggy. Now this particular eye is called a, a excuse me, is called a deep set eye. You get a lot of eyelid showing. There's a lot of eyelid between the eyebrow and the crease in the eye. This is your eyelid line, this is your eyelash line, okay? Really make sure you keep that in your mind. Eyelid line, eyelash line. This is a deep set eye with a lot of space between the lid line and the lash line. We're going to make this eye brown. To do a brown eye, for the iris of the eye, you use burnt umber. I'm just going to take my burnt umber and it's going to come right in here. Now I'm using a nice large brush because I'm working on a nice big eye. But you're going to be using your zero sable. Fill in the iris of the eye with burnt umber. Just like that. Get my hand out of the way. The pupil of the eye, which is the center of the eyeball, is Payne's gray. It always needs to be very black. If you get a little bit of white in this color, this Payne's gray, if you get white in it, it'll turn it. Uh, kind of milky looking and your person will look blind. You've got to keep that crisp black. Okay, so Payne's Gray for the pupil. Now, we want to show a little bit of a, uh, a secondary highlight in that eye. What happens is the gleam or the light source hits the eye and will give a gleam at about 10 o'clock where the pupil and the iris come together right on that, that line, about 10 o'clock. You could also do it, if your light's coming from the other way, you would do it at 2 o'clock, but not both. Just pick one or the other. If the gleam is at 10 o'clock on this eye, then the other eye that you're painting on the same person, it's at 10 o'clock on that eye. Or if it's at 2 o'clock on this side, it's at 2 o'clock on the other eye. Did I say this was 10 o'clock? I'm confused. Anyway, 2 o'clock or 10 o'clock, wherever the people in the iris come together, okay? That puts shine on the eye. Then you come across from that, and within the eyeball, there should be a secondary highlight. The eye is transparent, and so you want to see the light shining through that iris, through that eyeball. So what you do is, for, burn up, for brown eye, you take the little cat orange. You come around your pupil, like this, and give it a little bit of a shine, a little bit of a highlight with cat orange. That is your secondary highlight, okay? 
the um, tear duct of the eye, which is right here, is pretty color. Don't use too much paint. Just put a little bit of color in there and leave it alone. You want that to be fleshy. Now the eye down here, you don't want a hard line. This is very much like the lips. When you painted the lips, remember on the bottom lip you didn't put a hard line here. And a lot of people come along here and they put brown or they put black and make a hard line. This is the skin and the skin butts up against the white of the eye. Now if you see a line under here, you're seeing either an eyeliner or you're seeing the lashes that create that, that uh, color. What really happens right there, the flesh butts up against it and there's a shelf right here because the skin has a thickness. So there's a little shelf there. So that's what you get right there. But don't, please don't put a heavy line right here. And then the lashes come from beyond that. Now before we do the lashes, I want to take some pure white. And I want to put a little bit of shine on the white of the eye. Right here, down toward the bottom. This will make the white of the eye look a little bit cleaner and, and nicer. And it will also make it wet by putting the shine on there. Okay, so you've got the dirty white for the white of the eye, but then you shine it down at the bottom. Now obviously when you're doing a portrait, all of these things I'm showing you are done in a far smaller, uh, to a far smaller scale. Okay, the eyelashes on the upper lid, you take your burn number. Don't ever use black, even if the hair on the person is black, use burn number. Black is too heavy, Payne's Gray is too heavy for the face. The only place you use Payne's Gray on the face is in that pupil, that's it. So we're going to use, oops, I keep bumping that. We're going to use burnt umber and we're going to put an eyelash line on here. So I'm taking my brush and I'm going to stroke it back and forth to put a fuzzy, I call it a fuzzy caterpillar line, moving it back and forth to create the eyelash line. Okay. After you get your eyelash line created, then you can pull your eyelashes out of that. So you pick up a little bit more paint, you can add a little bit of um, thinner to this paint if you need to, to help it to move. And pull your eyelashes out. As you pull them out, you lift off. Pull out, lift off. Pull out, lift off. Come over here and do like that. And I try to make them different lengths because the eyelashes have a nine week life. So what happens is your eyelashes cycle. So you'll have some short ones that are just growing back in and you'll have some full, fully length fully long one. Now as the eyelashes come over here, you don't really want to have any lashes, especially if you're working on a, real, on a regular size portrait. What happens is as they get into here, they start getting shorter and then they would turn this way a little bit. But in a regular portrait, you're not going to really see that. So I want you to be aware that you don't bring eyelashes all the way over. For the eyelid line, it's your dark skin color right here. And you reinforce that eyelid line to really tuck that in. And then when we put our umbers on, we did our eyebrow like a uh, shadow. We just treated it like a shadow. Well, we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and put our color on it now. This person has dark hair and they're going to have a dark brow. We're going to use burn number again, we don't use black, and you stroke that brow on there in the direction that the hair is moving. Usually the hair moves up and to the side of the face. You can stroke either direction, but it's usually moving that way. Sometimes it's different, sometimes it does angle in this way. It just depends, you have to kind of look at your person. If you can't really tell, then you want to just kind of scrub it on. Some places of the, the brow are a little fuller. So they're going to be a little more dense and a little, the hair will be a little thicker. Keep the edges of your brow nice and soft. If you don't keep it soft, it'll look like it's been painted on. Okay? And then lastly, for bottom lashes, you may put them on if you want to, but you want to do very, very few, especially, if, again, if you're working on a standard size portrait. The lashes don't come from the edge of the eye. They drop below the shelf, and they come from just below that shelf there. 
and you don't want to put very many. You should keep them very soft. If you get too much dark stuff happening on the bottom of this eye, it's going to harden the eye and it won't have that soft feel to it. Okay, and then I failed to tell you, with regard to the tear duct, it's got the rose matter cat orange and there's two little bumps in the tear duct so that gets two little pieces of shine. You want it to look wet. You put two little blocks of shine right like that, okay? You may not see that when you're doing um, a portrait, a regular size portrait. You may not even see the shine in there. So you kind of have to judge based on your particular portrait. Okay, let's move over to this other eye. I'm trying to get my bearings here. Okay, dirty white for the white of the eye. This is an infant's eye. I know you can't tell this, with it being this big. This is an infant's eye. Now, let me tell you something important about that. When you have a person who's older, like an old man, you're doing a painting of them, the white of the eye will be kind of dirty. What happens is, over the years, with being eyes getting bloodshot and exposure and everything, the blood vessels that come into the eye, they break, and that's when you get the red in the eye. Well, it kind of stains the white of the eye, so you get kind of a dirty white and it tends to not be as blue, it's a little more brown. So what you want to do if you're doing an adult or an older person is you want to lean toward, you know, the burnt